I was asked to speak about the situation of the protection of intellectual property in China. So I would just mention that I not, will not focus, I will say a few words about China and EU, uh, Chinese relations in general. But apparently the interest is the question of IP, intellectual property, uh, and this is certainly a very important issue, both separately in China and in the EU, and it's also an important issue, sometimes a, a point of tension between the EU and, and uh, China. Uh, let me start by uh, stating the obvious, that uh, the EU is very much interested in the development of uh, the economic and trade relations with China. China is certainly has shown a breathtaking development in the uh, last decades. I, uh, I see a um, uh, lecture which was given, I think, in this room, and certainly in the in this institute by Mr. O'Connor, who speak about very uh, um, clear and bright terms about China's uh, present and future. And we certainly, from the EU, from the Commission point of view, we very much welcome mm -hmm. China's uh, <coughs> uh, growing economic importance and China's uh, role, positive role, played in the international economic relations. <coughs> It's also true that uh, China, when joined, uh, it joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, and it is also the fact today, the terms of its accession have reflected the particular uh, setup of the Chinese economy, the strong role of the government, and the fact that China is not yet considered as a market economy, even by the EU. Uh, this is an issue which is much discussed, and uh, while certainly uh, even in EU member states, uh, the government and government policies play uh, in some cases uh, a relatively big role, but certainly not to the extent comparable to the Chinese economy, which is uh, to a large extent uh, still government state-owned uh, companies are, make up an important part when it comes to the economic policies. And uh, it's also to a large extent influenced by the government and which is a particular uh, case sometimes of tension also in day-to-day, -to -day, <coughs> in the day-to-day -day, perhaps uh, practice. The government has a higher role than at least in the EU would necessarily welcome, as we more believe in uh, market economy, certainly with uh, and most of member states, uh, market economy with a strong social uh, uh, aspect, but still that markets and market forces should uh, be the major uh, uh, deciding factors in the development of the economy and more specifically in business decisions. Uh, the uh, issue of the, uh, the area of intellectual property is one of those areas, but there are a few others, uh, where this uh, some uh, different nature of market economies and the Chinese economy occasionally cause uh, some tensions and some uh, debates. Intellectual property is uh, uh, traditionally important, uh, but I think that in the present situation, where we all of, of the, at least the fast developing countries of the world move towards a knowledge-based economy, the intellectual uh, input, intellectual contact of products, and therefore the protection of this intellectual content is extremely important. It's rather easy to copy or use intellectual property uh, developed elsewhere. And therefore, there, is, there are decades old, in some cases, centuries old traditions to protect the, the various types of intellectual property, be it patents, trademarks, copyrights, uh, or uh, 
and there are new areas. Copyright, for instance, which used to be more uh, used for the protection of cultural products, now play a very important role in the protection of software, which is the basis of the um, uh, an economy based on uh, computers. So IP, in general, uh, plays an increasingly important role in the development of all countries. The, in the last decades, there was a, a gradual shift in the uh, patterns of trade, of manufacturing, where uh, first it was more the labor-intensive in industries, which gradually moved out from developed countries to developing countries, and including to uh, China. And but uh, in the recent period, also more, uh, also products with more intellectual content have started to be gradually shifted to be manufactured uh, in uh, various parts of the world. And again, China plays an outstanding role. China is now called the factory of the world, as uh, the Britain used to be in the 19th century. From the EU point of view, we uh, do not. Uh, question and we do not have any concerns about this uh, uh, trend, assuming, and this is important, assuming that this is again based on market forces and market interests. But this uh, kind of trend also uh, involves that the developed countries and including the EU will be more specialized in higher value added products with a higher intellectual content, be it uh, in uh, technology like patents or be it branded products protected by trademarks. And a healthy uh, cooperation, uh, economic coexistence if you want, and a, a good coexistence between the EU and China can be based on a situation where the EU's high uh, uh, products, so, and, with, and I speak about both, both goods and service products, containing high intellectual uh, content, can be exported to, uh, uh, to the world, including to China, while the, their intellectual content remains protected. Now, China has certainly did important progress in the protection of intellectual property. There are a number of laws, patent law, and new uh, copyright laws which have been enacted, uh, also based on China's commitments when it acceded to the World Trade Organization. And we see that there is a, a gradual improvement, not just in the legislation, but what is more, perhaps more important is the enforcement and protection of intellectual property on the ground. So there are positive sign, signs like higher level of administrative action, which is one of the way the, uh, China protects intellectual property and higher level of court cases, including criminal sanctions uh, applied uh, for infringe uh, or against infringement of intellectual property. So the statistics show a growing trend of these actions taken. That being said, the facts on the ground still show that China remains the world's most important source of counterfeit products. Uh, uh, even today, more than half of the uh, counterfeit products uh, which are captured at the EU's border originate from China. And, and, and world markets at other uh, countries where the enforcement, including border enforcement of intellectual property rights is not so uh, strong as in the EU, the share of <coughs> Chinese products might be even higher. We work our Chinese counterparts and, uh, to deal with this situation. 
both internally within China and also when it comes to intellectual, uh, sorry, when it comes to international trade, as uh, the damage is uh, if China is not just producing but exporting uh, products which are based on EU patents or which are uh, fake uh, branded products. And the damage is multiplied if it's the European uh, uh, owners of this rights do not just lose the Chinese market, but they lose also the, the world market. And unless we enforce this protection also, they are challenged at, at the internal market within the EU. So uh, uh, the uh, picture is mixed. So there are certainly, as I mentioned, strong efforts that have been uh, taken. There are uh, the various legislative action, but we would like to see a um, higher level of effect on the ground. The large international companies are in a better position to protect their IP. They have the uh, uh, resources to uh, even to have court cases in China, uh, to, uh, and as I mentioned, court cases are increasing, number of court cases, which we very much welcome. But when it comes to European small and medium-sized enterprises, they very often do not have the, uh, the resources and the uh, financial muscle to go into lengthy litigation before Chinese court. And uh, to be frank, uh, some of the, uh, the administrative requirements for carrying uh, through a court case in China are not exactly helpful. If you are interested, I can give you some rather specific examples. But they make it exceedingly difficult for foreign companies to defend their interest before Chinese courts before, because of the uh, administrative formalities that are uh, uh, re uh, required. The, uh, earlier, the uh, problems what we had with China were mostly focused on trademark and copyright issues. So basically, counterfeited uh, products, uh, branded products were produced or in other cases, uh, the, uh, some uh, copyrighted products uh, were not uh, properly protected. In the recent period, patent cases have received an increased in prom uh, prominence. So uh, where uh, the issue is the, uh, whether the uh, European inventions, patented inventions, are properly protected or not in China. There are legally, uh, uh, sorry, there are legal ways to transfer technology, patented products, so licensing, uh, for instance, but licensing should happen on the basis of, uh, of negotiations and uh, agreed terms between the license holder or license holder, uh, <laughs> license holder and the licensee. What we see uh, in increasing numbers in, in China is that on one hand in the ICT sector there are, uh, there's use of patented products without paying royalties, which is certainly one way of misusing uh, the intellectual property of other people. In other cases, we see that there, there is compulsory licensing, which is recognized, I have to emphasize, under international law, including under the TRIPS agreement. But in China, it can be used in such manner, which is not foreseen in the TRIPS agreement. So there are some hazy uh, uh, concepts used in the uh, uh, Chinese law on compulsory licensing, which allows a government uh, basically to force a uh, transfer of the or the uh, force uh, the uh, uh, patent holder to, to take note and to accept that 
which patent rights are used by another company. And it is not uh, necessarily based on, as I mentioned, on intellectually recognized situations and, uh, and uh, uh, procedures. There are also such requirements, in some cases, especially in the engineering sector, that there are so-called design institutes operating in China that require, for instance, for public procurement contract, an exceedingly detailed description of the uh, technical uh, uh, content of the product, including the novelty element, and we do not necessarily see the logic of these requirements, and we are somewhat concerned that this might be one of the channels through which uh, uh, protected European technological knowledge might be uh, leaked. There are also certification procedures in China, which again require exceedingly detailed uh, information uh, to be given. Now, we do not question, as I mentioned, that the intellectual property pay, uh, field play in the uh, development of China is like is the case for the EU, an important role. The EU's uh, EU 2020 strategy is based on what we, one of the, uh, the important uh, elements is smart uh, development, based, uh, meaning that based on technological uh, innovation and new technologies. And there is also in China a national intellectual property strategy, which is, uh, uh, forces the development uh, until the year 2020, where uh, the uh, goals are, uh, are quite similar to those of the EU's goals, basically to, to, you, uh, to have an uh, 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 economy based on comparatively high level in terms of creation, utilization, protection, and administration of IP rights. And we very much welcome these goals. We also actively work with our uh, Chinese uh, uh, counterparts to uh, in various forms of IP dialogues, IP working group, <coughs> to discuss and trying to solve problems. And there are uh, certain uh, results. We would like to, 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 uh, to see, to be frank, somewhat more uh, results. We think that this is also in the interest of China, because China is increasingly also a source of intellectual knowledge and property. China is today the uh, sixth largest user of the uh, international patent system. So there is a lot of new intellectual uh, knowledge, intellectual property being created in China every day. So we think that it's also in the interest of Chinese uh, right holders and inventors to have a high level of, of protection of intellectual property. And we hope that we are moving uh, in that direction. It's not a, a very fast movement. It is, uh, it's not always very easy, but still there is certain uh, uh, development. We very much rely on the enforcement. I mentioned that there is a, a possibility to, to rely on the Chinese core system. Sometimes it works. Sometimes we find it perhaps not fully impartial. There were a recent case uh, involving a large uh, European company, Schneider, which tried to enforce the protection of a patent rights. Uh, and according to the company, the, the original invention and patent was originated from Schneider, but a very similar patent has been uh, uh, accepted in China. And then the Chinese company sued this company Schneider. And the resulting penalty original uh, was 31 million US dollars. Now you should know that in the Chinese practice, any of damages so before that were in about 100 times of that, 
in the range of 250 to 300,000 US dollars. This was the, the kind of, uh, of damages which were established for a case involving Microsoft. Uh, of course, we took up very clearly and very strongly this issue as an example where we would like to see a more consistent use of, of, of law. And uh, subsequently, the, the situation was somewhat perhaps uh, ameliorated that the level of this fine has been reduced, but still a very, in the end, it was still Schneider, which was the case, and with a, uh, still a, a very heavy penalty was applied. I could give a few similar cases. We, of course, collect this uh, very um, consistently and discuss with our Chinese colleagues, which shows that there is development, but we would like to see this, uh, this to be uh, speeded up. We hope that our problems will be uh, resolved in the preferred manner, that is through dialogue and agreed solutions. Where the EU is, by the way, not alone in its uh, concerns about the protection of IP. It is just a couple of months back that in the uh, World Trade Organization, China's trade policy uh, review has taken place, where the problems of also other countries, US, Japan, Canada, and many others, uh, or concerning the protection of IP have received a very high prominence and were discussed very clearly. So it is not a particular EU obsession that we are concerned about the level of protection. But we would like, as I mentioned, to work with China and to find solutions which serve the interests of uh, both sides. So this is the uh, present situation, and I think that as introduction, that perhaps this might be sufficient. If you have any particular mm -hmm. questions or comments, then would be pleased to uh, answer them. Thanks.